Okay, this is Dr. Martin's uh, lecture on chapter 20, and this is section one. I'm going to talk a little bit about reproduction in the angiosperms. Again, these are the flowering plants, and reproduction centers around a structure, a reproductive structure that's called the flower. And so I'm going to go over the structures of the flower. We've talked about uh, briefly flower structures when we talked about Gregor Mendel and his hybridization experiments. Um, but we're going to go in a little more detail this time. I'm going to use figure 20.1 and try to reproduce it here. And you'll have to forgive my primitive drawings. Okay, so this is a diagram of flower, and there are a number of structures that I want you to be able to identify on uh, a, a diagram of a flower. So if we start from the outside and work our way in, the flower um, is going to be composed of some outer leaves, and the outermost are actually green. Uh, leaves and these are called sepals. I'm going to put green in parentheses. A little bit further up, most flowers are going to have colored leaf like structures that are called petals. So in this case, this flower has purplish um, colored petals. Uh, this is the stem, and the stem actually ends um, at an enlarged structure that's called the receptacle. Above the receptacle, in the very center of the flower, is the female structure. And there's a, a general name for that structure, and that is the carpal. The carpal is composed of three structures. And so I'll just list them here, but they are listed in the diagram. Uh, we have the stigma, which is located at the very tip of the structure that protrudes usually above the rest of the um, parts of the flower. And we'll see the importance of that. The, there's a long, um, tube-like structure that's called the style and that connects the stigma to the swollen enlarged portion at the base of the flower and that is called the ovary. So we've got the stigma, B is the style, and this structure down here is the ovary. The ovary contains one or more ovules, and we'll, within the ovules are the, um, the eggs. Now let's take a look at the male parts. The male parts are usually located outside of the female part, so it's kind of moving outward, but within the petals and the uh, sepals. So in this diagram, the male parts are located here. I'm going to circle one. We have a name, a single name for the entire structure, and those are called stamens. So that's a single stamen. A stamen is composed of two parts. Um, one are the anthers, and the other is called the filament. Sorry. 
So the anther is going to be yellowish. You'll see pollen grains associated with it. Uh, the filament is what is going to hold the anther up close to the opening of the flower. All right, so to summarize, we've got a number of terms here that you need to be familiar with. Um, again, we've got sepals, we've got petals, we have a stem, uh, we have an expanded portion of the stem that actually holds the um, base of the flower. Uh, in the very center of the flower, we have the female part, which is called the carpal. The carpal is made up of the stigma, the style, and the ovary. Surrounding that uh, is the male part of the flower, which is called the stamen, and the stamen is composed of the anthers containing the pollen and the filament, which is a long structure that's going to attach the anther to uh, the base of the flower. All right, so that's basically uh, a little bit of information on the structure of a flower. And now we're going to go back to looking at the overall sequence of events in reproduction. And I'm going to use figure 20.2, which is similar to a figure that we've used before, but there's some differences here. This is have some in, uh, expanded portion here. All right, so we are going to, here's our flower and ovules and petals, of course. And within each ovule is the, what's called the embryo sac which is the female gametophyte. And here we've got one ovule enlarged. And you can see here, um, that is called the embryo sac. It is also called the female gametophyte. And there's going to be a number of cells that develop within that. And then surrounding that is uh, tissue derived from the ovary um, that's going to protect that structure. So we're going to look at some a cell within the embryo sac, and that cell is going to undergo meiosis to produce four cells. Only one of those cells is actually going to survive. And that's, that structure is called a megaspore. Uh, which is not something you need to know. But the megaspore will then go through mitosis and produce a number of cells located within the embryo sac. And at the very base is the egg. And there's also some other cells that surround the egg and a couple of cells that are located above the egg. Now let's follow around here to look at the anthers and what's happening there. Uh, within the pollen grain, we have uh, some structures, we'll call them microspores actually, and they undergo meiosis to produce four spores. Those spores are now haploid. Each spore will produce a pollen grain. And within the pollen grain, we have uh, two cells that develop at one point. And ultimately, sperm will develop. OK, so in fertilization of the flowering plants, there's actually well, in reproduction, I should say, there's two things that are going to happen that are actually separate. One is called pollination. And that is simply bringing the pollen to the stigma of the flower. So that's not actually fertilization, but it's an, an essential part of reproduction in flowering plants. And so the 
pollen grains will actually, at least one or more will land on that surface. It's usually sticky and it has some other proteins in it that can recognize the correct um, pollen grain. The pollen grain will germinate and produce a tube that makes its way down the style. Remember that tube is called the pollen tube. Within the pollen tube are going to be two sperm. And those sperm are going to travel within the tube. They're going to make their way to the egg, which is located right here. There's some protective tissue. One sperm will fertilize the egg. So egg plus sperm equals zygote. The second sperm will actually fertilize some additional cells within the embryo sac. So sperm plus central cell to give rise to the, what's called the endospore, endosperm, sorry, which is the, will produce the food-like material. So this is why we call it double fertilization. Because we have two events where sperm are involved. The sperm fertilizing the egg produces a zygote the sperm fertilizing some other cells within, actually two other cells within the embryo sac to produce what will be the food material in the seed, it's called the endosperm. Okay, that's the end of uh, lecture on chapter 20.1 and we'll, I'll continue uh, in a bit.